The question you should be asking the child is, what are you passionate about? Okay. Let's try this. Do you feel you're good at it? Let's try that. What keeps you up at night? What bothers you? So that you, the parent, can now learn from the child what your assignment is, what their purpose is, what gifts God gave them. Don't present one as better or more fancy than the other one. Just give them the stakes. You say, Daddy, actually, I feel like I like to clean, so I would love to be the garbage man. And you say, okay, son, I'm proud of you. And I forgot. But, but, but hold on, hold on, let me land. Hold on, let me land. And that's okay, but, but let me explain to you that in this part of the world, the garbage man is not paid well. So if you want to be a garbage man, you have to be the best garbage man ever, son. Do you understand that? And you have to do it in a way that other garbage men can do. So son say, hmm, okay, daddy, let me think about it. And with coaching, with trust, with understanding that he has your back in, he finally comes up with something. He says, dad, I'm going to do my garbage like this, but this is how I would do it. And then it gets presented to the world and the world says, wow, we've never seen this before. What are you called? So I'm, a, I'm just a garbage man. I say, no, 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 you have to give it a different title because this is not what garbage men do. Yeah, hello, beautiful people out there. This is your boy, Jabron. We meet again on Authentic Plus TV. Today is another beautiful topic that we ought to discuss. You hear it almost every day. But what do you make out of it? What is the meaning? Do you really understand when we say that particular, you know, thing? I mean, so today um, we're once again privileged to have Papa Akest. You understand what I mean? Because we, we've already had a video and then the response was so great. So there's therefore the need that we come to him again for another, you know, interesting discussion. And it's about personal brand or authentic brand so when we say personal brand what do we mean do you understand it you've been hearing it right yeah so the man is here to do justice to that and so let's you know gather ourselves just be ready be attentive and then listen and then watch carefully as you digest this very topic so papa um i welcome you once again to authentic plus tv thank you very much yeah, and then most of the times we hear personal brand, personal brand, and authentic brand. What are they? So when you talk about your personal brand, your personal brand is basically, and, and by the way, good day to your viewers. Your personal brand, or should I say your brand, the brand is the equity that you have in the image or perception that people have of you, if it's a product. So for a person, your personal brand is that equity that you've built in the perception people have about you, the image they have about you. The result is the reputation. And so somebody with a strong personal brand may have people more attracted or finding more value in their image or the perception they have about them. And that attracts value to the person. For somebody with a weak brand, they have to do a lot more to sell themselves. So. Um, we talk about the difference between selling and, and marketing. Selling is basically closing a deal, but marketing is what makes you attractive so people want to buy, which makes the selling easier. When you have a good, strong personal brand, it's easier to attract people. It's easier to find a job. It's easier to find business. It's easier to make friends. You, you gain better relationships. Now, what is the difference with authentic brand? Or how, what, why, does authentic, what, why is authentic brand even relevant? You can build a personal brand with hard work and using the right tools, okay? And a lot of people have built personal brands online, social media, using tools. But when that brand is not authentic, it's a lot more work because what you're basically doing is keeping up appearances, which is a lot of things that we see on social media. So people are creating a facade which is not natural to them, so it's much more difficult. So the question is, how do you build an authentic brand? An authentic brand is the natural brand you build by being who you are and who you're supposed to be. So then comes the question, who are you supposed to be? And this is where we get into the real meat of, of, of the conversation. Oh. So um, I believe the topic we agreed was to be, to live purposefully 
to build an authentic brand. And when we talk about living purposefully, it comes back to the same thing. A life well lived, a purposeful life purpose, right? Now this purpose topic has been a buzz for a while, but the question most people ask themselves is how do I find my purpose? And so that's where it gets a bit complicated. Now let me use my settled beliefs because this is not based on any reference I'm going to give you, any research I'm going to give you. This is my settled beliefs based on my personal experiences. I believe that God in his greatness created human beings each with a unique purpose or role to play. And he gave us gifts to complement our ability to achieve those roles. And those gifts are what we call talent. And sometimes in determining, reflecting, praying, seeking guidance to find what that purpose, and let's think of it as a destination, is, you will need to experience, you will need to experiment, you will need to connect, you will need to watch, you will need to pay attention to certain key things. One, generally what you're naturally good at is leading you to that purpose. Two, what you're passionate about is leading you to that purpose. Three, what you, 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 you most get angry about is leading you to that purpose. And four, what, you, uh, what fulfills you is leading you to that purpose. And fulfillment is very different from being happy. Fulfillment is a sort of peace, a sort of feed into that hunger of existentialism. But let me try not to be too abstract. Let me, let me just come down. Let's say you found your purpose and there's a whole conversation to it and it can get quite complicated. But let's say you found your purpose. What your purpose does for you is it allows you to define a set of values that you want to follow. Values like, for me, impact is important to me. It's, a, it's part of my value system. For some, it's survival. For some, it's taking care of their family. For some, it's peace. For some, it's care for some is governance for some it's being financially well whatever your value system is and i'm not here to judge anybody on their value system but that value system once you prescribe to it three four five six whatever it is you try to stick to it because if you don't stick to it you're not authentic right and so that purpose should determine your value system and that value system should choose what job you decide to take where you decide to work, what business you decide to do. So for example, if your value system says that you believe in community, you believe in supporting people, you believe in care and compassion, that same value system can lead you to do a job that cheats people because that's a conflict to your value system. Now, when you determine what you're passionate about, and it's very important that your, your readers are ready to do the research because like I said, we don't have enough time to unpack all of these, so I'm giving an overview so that you can now look and we see if they don't understand. So once you determine what your passion is, the passion is like the fuel you put in the car. The car has to go to Cape Coast. The purpose is at Cape Coast. But for you to get to Cape Coast, it's a long, windy, sometimes dangerous road. And that passion is the fuel that will get you there. And without that passion, you're going to give up, you're going to get tired, you're going to run out of jet or, or firepower on your way to Cape Coast, right? Now, there are gifts that you have, you know, the throttle, the, the little indicators and all those things that come in the car that you have to take you there, which make things easier. Your talents, right, which are gifts that are given to you. You shouldn't start any business or start looking for work until you've identified the natural gift you have. Not identifying it as like, it's like deciding to start a business your dad is a wealthy man and you go begging for money instead of asking your dad for capital. Maybe your dad even has a trust fund for you. The first piece you should look is your trust fund, right? You don't go now saying, hey, I need an investor. At least start with the little capital you have access to and then construct, right? So the talents are the gifts we have. You start from that. It's already a gift. It's already capital, right? So that's where you start from. But talents are not enough. Talents are getting you notice. Talents give you an opportunity. You don't do much, right? Until you develop them hard work to what we call skills. Now, skills are what they do, job. People want to have the skills, right? The difference between somebody who learns a skill that he's not naturally disposed to or not as talented, and somebody who learns a skill which is or develops his talent, is the difference is that the person who drives 
or who navigates the, the who builds the skill or their talent tend to be better because it's something you're naturally gifted at. So when you own it, you're much, much better. And that's why you have the the Ronald, Ronaldo's, Ronaldinho's, the the Neymar's and all those guys. They are naturally talented people who put discipline to developing your talent the skills will get you job. Skills will get you higher. But you don't stay there. You need to build through hard work the skills to expertise. Now, this is where it gets interesting because expertise will get you noticed. Okay? Expertise will get you noticed. Expertise will get you promoted. Expertise will get you to move up the ladder. But don't stop there. Develop even more time, even more work, even more put more time into it and once you do that and in Malcolm Gladwell's book outlines he talks about 10,000 hours when you put in those 10,000 hours committed to dedicating to doing it to building it to spending time on it to getting trained by the right leaders consistently on it because you're passionate that takes you to mastery and mastery is the ultimate this is where you start to consult this is where people start to seek you out this is where you start to motivate start to talk to people that the world now notices you. Now let's connect that back to branding. So remember when I said you develop the talents and skills and skills will get you a job? By being even in a workplace, the job you choose to be is an association. And so if you work for, let's say, PwC or any of the big fours, or you decide to work for, or you go to church in a particular big church, that church has built a brand. And so by association, you are beginning to gain a brand. People are beginning to know you. Oh, that person goes to ICGC, or that person works at PwC, or that person is from Ashesi University, or that person is from Lagos, or that person is from Moba. So by association, you are building a brand. So people know you, they respect you because of your brand, right? I worked in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, whenever I mentioned it, well, yeah, he worked there, it's a brand. But you're living off the brand of the institution. You need to be careful. Because the day you leave that institution, you not build a brand for yourself, that goes away. It's a cover. Right? So you are branded by association. Yeah, many a times you see, you know, let me use Ghana for example, or the those in the, you know, um, the public space. For example, the musicians, the uh, actresses, movie actresses and actors, you know, portraying a particular lifestyle. And then, um, you know, in this world, we have people that um, we use as role models. You understand? So you have somebody looking up to you, but then the kind of lifestyle you are portraying out there, he wants to live like you. But do, those people, don't, don't they feel pressured? Because, you know, they have to look at the chains you are putting on your neck, or necklaces, you know, the watches, the rolexes, and then the uh, Balenciaga and all the, you know, shoes kind of stuff that you are wearing. How would they be able to get to the purposeful life if that is the road they have to talk? Well, first and foremost, let's, let's be clear about something. Lack of knowledge will let people do things that they don't understand. So if you look at the model I gave you, they are running to want to enjoy the pleasures without looking at the pain. So those artists, that was a process they went through to get to where they went to if they are authentically showing off. And you need to go through that process to get to where you're getting to, right? Now, the second point is, is that really where you want to get to? Or you are assuming that that is where pleasure is? Because a lot of people now go through that line and then when they get there, realize that they're not happy about where they are. It's all has no meaning. It has no fulfillment. And so you end up getting people who are now wealthy, thinking they are successful and they kill themselves because life has no meaning. So. That's why it's important to understand, if you understand that pain and you understand the priorities I mentioned about, if your priorities are not to wear a gold chain, then why go through the process, okay? Some people think, will tell you, to sell music, right? To sell music, you have to wear the chains or you have to use the nice cars. But that's not really true because we also have other artists that are doing very well, gospel artists, who don't have the nice cars, right? But then the second thing is, but who are you trying to sell to? If you're trying to generally do it in churches, you don't need gold chains, do you? Right? 
But if you really want money, but you're pretending that you want it for the churches, then you're lying to yourself, which is not authentic. I can't, I can't talk too much about inauthentic brands. There's too much to talk about. But let me just focus on the authentic. Yeah. So if you see somebody who is a role model to you, why are they a role model to you? If you go picking a role model before you determine what your priorities are, then that's already you're already in trouble because from the beginning, you're trying to be a counterfeit version of somebody you've seen. But when you're honest with yourself and you have your priorities, you understand your value system, and now you say, let me look out for role models, then what you do is you align and judge, and basically you audition your role models based on your value system. And if they fit, then you naturally aspire to become like them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So for example, I would say, I don't know if I'll call him a role model, but somebody I listen to a lot, somebody I read about a lot, in fact, two people, uh, John Maxwell um, and uh, Simon Sinek, you know, and a few other people I'm reading, and Chroma too as well. So when I look at something I'm passionate about, I'm passionate about leadership, I'm passionate about sharing, I'm passionate about understanding. And when I look at these three people, I see, okay, John Maxwell understands quite a bit about leadership. Simon Sinek talks about, you know, being a human being, being a good human being, and some of the key things. And Chroma was a visionary. So now when I look at my, my value system and I look at my priorities, they check. So now I say, okay, how did Nkrumah do what he did for Africa? So now he can be a role model to me. And I don't, I don't, I don't see any literature that shows Nkrumah in a, in a fancy car gold chain, so I don't need that, sure. right? What he did was he wrote policies, he wrote books, he, he was very particular about what he wanted. So I look at that, but even then I realized that Nkrumah made mistakes, and so I also learned from his mistakes, right? I read John Maxwell's books, look at what, and even with John Maxwell's books, as much as, and he's an authority on leadership, but yeah, sometimes I read certain things and I'm like, ah, I don't agree with this one because I already have a value system and I already have a belief system. So I, so I don't just read and just consume, but I, 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 I'm guided, I tick, I, ah, this doesn't, this, okay, this makes sense. So I take what works, right? Same with Simon Sinek. So you have to do the homework on yourself first. If you jump in just trying to be a counterfeit because you think, because a lot of times, even when we think they are successful and we like their level of success, we will get there and realize that's not what we want or we don't even consider it success. And you would have just wasted time living somebody else's life, which is not yours. So it's authentic and easier when you start being true to yourself by spending, sp that time you will spend trying to figure out how to be in a gold car, spend that time trying to figure out what your purpose is. I, I, I love that. I love that. But let's, let's look at something. I have two more questions. Now, is it that growing up, sometimes you ask your child, what do you want to be in future? Okay, I want to be a pilot. I want to be a footballer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a nurse. I want to be this. And then you see a child growing up with a particular kind of um, char characteristics. And then you, uh, as a parent, was okay, from the way I see my child, he is going to grow up to be this. And then you see a child portraying certain uh, attributes of where you think he falls into. And then you, as a parent, will say, okay, you, you, you just completed the school. I want you to go to the engineering because I see engineering in you. Is, is that how to identify it? Or, you know, sometimes you see... First of all, let's ask this. What is the role of the parent? Is it to be a guide? Is it to be a leader? Is it to be the determining factor for the child? Or are they the law? A lot of parents claim they are guides. And if you're a guide and you're merely a custodian and you understand that everybody was made unique, God has just merely put them through you and given you the guiding role, then you understand it. So it's not you to determine what your child is. Your child has already been pre-purposed for a purpose. Okay. And if you understand that, then the question shouldn't be, what do you want to be in future? Because all that your child has seen that makes them want to be something in future is an emulation of somebody else. And so it's counterfeit. Excuse me to say, the question you should be asking the child is, what are you passionate about? Okay. Let's try this. Do you feel you're good at it? Let's try that. What keeps you up at night? What bothers you? So that you, the parent, can now learn from the child what your assignment is, what their purpose is, what gifts God gave them. And then when you determine it, then your role as a parent is now, let me guide them to that purpose or let me guide them on the path. 
okay, to build in a strong value system. And once they do and they know their priorities and they understand their assignment, then what you do is you just give them suggestions. So, Daddy, I feel strongly like I need to save lives. And you say, okay. This is what doctors do. They save lives. This is what soldiers do. They save lives. This is what, um, what is it called? Those who clean garbage do. You know, they save lives through, through you know, keeping places hygiene. Which of them do you feel compelled to do? And don't present one as better or more fancy than the other one. Just give them the stakes. You say, Daddy, actually, I feel like I like to clean. So I would love to be the garbage man. And you say, okay, son, I'm proud of you. And I've got, but well, but, no, but no, hold on, hold on, let me land, hold on, let me land. And that's okay, but, but let me explain to you that in this part of the world, the garbage man is not paid well. So if you want to be a garbage man, you have to be the best garbage man ever, son. Do you understand that? And you have to do it in a way that other garbage men can do. So son say, hmm, okay, daddy, let me think about it. And with coaching, with trust, with understanding that he has your back in, he finally comes up with something says, Dad, I'm going to do my garbage like this, but this is how I would do it. And then it gets presented to the world and the world says, wow, we've never seen this before. What are you called? So I'm, a, I'm just a garbage man. I say, no, 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 you have to give it a different title because this is not what garbage men do. And so you give it a fancy title, you give it a different brand and you're doing amazing things. And the next thing you know, everybody's calling it whatever they want, but the truth is he's just a garbage man. You see, that's where the personal branding comes in. Everything is impossible, uh, everything is unique, or we don't do this in Africa until it is done by somebody who believes well enough about it and starts attracting, becomes successful, starts making money. Then all of a sudden, we realize that, oh, in Africa, we do that. Lack of knowledge makes parents predefine what you can and cannot do. There was a time when being an IT person, they say, we don't even understand what you're doing, no. There was a time when they would tell you, oh, you're working for government. Oh, how much can you make there? But people have found ways to navigate and make these ones look good. Now people can stay at home and work remotely, which was something I was unheard of. So the child themselves, and which is another thing that parents need to teach, how to be resilient so that when the negatives are hitting you, you stay true to the course. Okay, I, I think the way you explained it, you know, I think I would have to rest the, 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 the follow-up question because else I was going to say, be, by the time you finish telling your daddy that, hey, I want to be a garbage man, your, your jaw will break instantly. Because the kind of slap you are going to I get understand. from your parents. But then, because mm, of his lack of knowledge. Because of his But you see, that is why the examples of people, there's somebody in Nigeria, I've forgotten his name. He proudly tells me, he asks, what business are you in? He says, I'm in the business of shit. Excuse my language. And that's what he does. He builds KVIP tools for people to, and he has a system for collecting, you know, to, stool. And he's very proud of it. And he's a multi-millionaire, right? Now all of a sudden, is it a bad business? No, but, but, but one, yes. one thing, one, one more thing. You see, sometimes as, 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 a, as a child growing up, you're now a youth, okay? I can see that this is my way of life. This is my purpose. You understand? I'm a footballer. You've played football to a certain level. You get to a particular level in your life and I realize that you are not so passionate because per your explanations, you need to be passionate about you know the purpose because that gives you the satisfaction and everything, the, the, the commitment to push harder. And I realize that, hey, um, I'm not interested in football again. I want to do, you know, I, I, I want to do a buy and sell, you know? What, what accounts for that? Are you passionate about buy and sell or you just think that it makes money? You see, a lot of times we need to reflect on the questions that come in our mind too. Are we going to buy and sell because we see our friends doing better? Or are we going to because we're passionate about it? And also the fact that you may or may not be passionate about football doesn't mean that the football doesn't have a role. So you may not be passionate about being a footballer, but football may be your talent. And that talent is part of a combination of talents for you to do something amazing. So maybe your passion is developing your talent. And so instead of being a footballer, maybe you're meant to be a coach. 
or maybe you're meant to start an academy or help get kids off the streets using skills like football and something else to get them off the street. So your talent is a part of a combination of talents for you to become a mentor, a big brother, a, habil a, a rehabilitator. And so you didn't find that passion because you were not meant to be a professional footballer. The problem is we are so lazy sometimes that when we see the first talent, we jump onto it. But maybe we need to keep exploring. So it's not so much finding the talent but finding the combination of talents and what those combinations give you access to. It took me a while for me to hone my brand because I was somebody who did so many different things and I lacked the understanding of how we complemented each other. So I would train, my, I would train myself, oh, I'm a tech person. Oh, I'm a, I'm a communicator. Oh, I'm a writer. Oh, I'm a, I'm a what is it called? I do a bit of moderation. Oh, I'm an MC. And everybody keeps saying, hey, Papa, you do so many things. Jack of all trades, jack of all trades. And it was confusing people. But later I realized all I do is bring all the pieces together to make sense. So when I say I'm a connector, I'm a connector because I connect people, I connect ideas. Also, I can optimize the people in, in, in question. I'm a facilitator. I facilitate conversations so there's optimization. I'm a, I'm a communicator. I communicate so I can take out the information that is required so overall the institution is optimized. I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a leader. All these are still different talents being used for the same purpose of making that which is better. That's all it is. And I want to do it. I started with individuals through coaching. I'm now doing it with companies and eventually I'm looking at doing it for countries. Okay. And it all depends on my mastery level. So I need to keep growing. I need to keep learning. I need to keep developing myself so I can give more value to more. But if you don't understand that and you hone into one and you say, oh, no, I'm no longer doing this. I'm doing this. I'm not. Who says you're no longer doing what? It's just part of the journey. It's a long journey. That journey doesn't happen tomorrow. We are too hungry trying to see success that we're missing the destination we're supposed to be going to. And it is sad because when we all start working towards our destination and we all do our part, this world will be a beautiful place because the solutions are here. You have your role to play. I have my role to play. I am not greater than you. But your refusal to know your path and for me to be on my path may make me be perceived as greater than you because I am on my journey. And we all need to find our journey so we can all do our part. The world is ours and we all have to contribute to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm looking at my final question. Okay. And I want to say if... By the way, I hope you noticed that he said last two questions and he's asked about four or five already. So, <laughs> yeah. Can you forgive me? This is going to be probably going to be the last question, uh, I, I suppose. Now that he used probably, I'm scared. <laughs> So uh, uh, I want to I want us to look at this person, um, for example, and then based on all the description, the purpose, and everything, to the level of a mastery, and then for you to be at the mastery level, you need to have that insistence. I want us to look practically, look into the football arena, okay. if we can have a perfect example. Let's look. I'm not a big fan of football, oh, so, I, so I don't know the footballers know. too well. You don't know the footballers well? Yeah. I, I'm looking at um, somebody like um, Cristiano Ronaldo. Okay. Are you okay with him? I'm okay. I've heard enough about him. Okay. I've not fully destroyed, but I've heard enough about him. Yeah. If, if I hear he's very disciplined. I hear he's very competitive. Yes. Okay. Okay. To the level, to the level that, you know, he and Messi, okay. who plays for Argentina, okay. you know, have played to a level where most people think okay. that they are old and need to calm down okay. for others to follow okay. or come up and then shine. Okay. But here is the case, if it is not Messi, it is Cristiano Ronaldo. Okay. And they've been there for over a decade. Okay. And then you could see that they've mastered, if I am following critically, they've mastered whatever they are doing by the football they play as talent, mastered it to a level. And then the insistence is that even though they are old, mm -hmm. they still think they, they are playing better. Mm -hmm. So it is either even with the um, awarding organizations, mm -hmm. FIFA, mm -hmm. if it is not Messi, mm -hmm. then it's Cristiano Ronaldo mm -hmm. that has to and win. They, and the they are award. very competitive. They are very competitive. Okay. 
You think they've mastered, they may not think they've mastered, okay? And the masters, you know what the masters are seeking? You know what the masters are seeking? Yeah. What the rest of the world is thinking, what else do you want? You know what the masters are seeking? Legendary, legacy. And legacy cannot be achieved till you die. That is when the future determines if you have legacy or not. You see, Hussein Bolt broke the world record. True or false? Yeah. Did he break it once? No. Exactly. Why didn't he stop there? Because he understood that he was not at his limit. They understand. They know something we don't. Because you see, the more you rise in your mastery, the more certain things become more clear to you and apparent to you. And it is the masters when they hit legacy moments that the world gets rewarded for because we get to see what we thought was impossible that now becomes possible. So you owe it to the world not to stop. You owe it to the world to keep pushing. You owe it to the world to understand if there is more and to give it all till you die. And that's what they're doing. So we may consider the masters because we know very little until we realize that what we thought was superhuman and impossible, they had to achieve for us to realize that it's possible. Now, the world doesn't think that the fastest man can run at whatever Carl Lewis record was. Now we know the fastest man can run faster because Usain Bolt did it. So when you get to that mastery level where very few and you've made all those millions, the, per the, the person who was looking for money is now diversifying and trying to find out how can I make the money making more money. That is the meaning to them. But the person who understands says, I have not hit my limit. Which is why the beautiful thing in the Bible is when Solomon was asked for anything, he did not ask for riches. He asked for understanding, and in understanding, he gained everything else. And that is what each one of us needs to be praying for and needs to be working towards. Understanding. And when we have understanding and we put in the work that we'll get there. By the way, another thing is a lot of people are not, I, I sometimes say I'm even too lazy to do certain things, right? But the same Ronaldo you're talking about, who I don't know too much about, but I heard the story about him. That even in table tennis, which has nothing to do with what he does, he went to a friend's place, just a friend. They were hanging out. They played. The friend beat him. You see, he went home, didn't sleep, just trained himself, came back to meet the guy again on another day and beats the guy. That is how competitive he is. They are very pristine in putting on those hours. When you come into the world of Toastmasters where I'm recognized as, you know, a big brand, one of the things I tell people when it comes to speaking is, because from moving from a bad, being a bad speaker to a good speaker, it's a sharp curve. It's, it's a sharp curve, straight. But moving from a good speaker to a great speaker is a very, very shallow curve. It's like it's almost not moving. It's a very hard, continuous work. So for you to see the difference between Ronaldo yesterday and today, it's going to be hard because we're not even equipped to see the difference. But he knows that he's getting better. He knows that he's getting closer to the curve. He knows. And it takes a lot more work than he even did when he was younger to become noticed. Baba, I'm true to my word. Your final word. I'm done with the questions. Seek understanding. Find your purpose. Everything else will come to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so when people want to reach you, what? How do they reach you? Reach me through him. <laughs> so reach him through me. It has been Authentic Plus TV. Kindly subscribe to the channel. Share this video for everybody to benefit from this video because it's very educative, very entertaining, and very insightful. I mean, I love this. Uh, I love this man because um, he always opens my mind and I'm sure that he opens your mind too to different level of things that we aren't aware of, we're not thinking about. That is what he does. He, he gives me happiness anytime I listen to him and I interview him. So I'm sure you would want me to do more with him. And that's exactly what is going to happen. Even if you want us to do a particular topic that you think about, you can do that, write that in the comment section, and we're going to do that for you. Kindly subscribe to Authentic Plus TV, share, comment, and like, and let's go far. This is Papa Akes. And I have one last thing I want to add to your viewers. Okay. Uh, since you asked if people want to reach me, I've put together my life experiences, my communication into 30 tips. Okay. And I've also put together some of my leadership principles into 30 tips. And I've put them together as one book. Okay. There were two books, I've put them together as one book. If anybody's interested in reading more, they can connect with you to get right. a copy of the book. Okay, okay, connect with me. I'm now the agent, you understand? Yeah, and I love that. So connect with me to have access to the books. I I'm sure you know what we are talking about. The book is going to change one or two in your life. I mean, it's going to do you a great deal of good. Thank you. See you in the next video.